Hello and welcome to program 81 and this program like its predecessor program 80 is based on the time and sales provider so if you're interested in the time and sales provider this would be a good one to study and uh, maybe develop something of your own. But what we're doing, if we just uh, quickly look at the program, is when the time and sales provider is updated, then we're keeping a record based on the tick type. So if it's a trade, then we're uh, incrementing a trade counter. If it's an ask, we're incrementing an ask counter. And if it's a bid, we're incrementing a bid counter. And then on the chart, we're plotting those. In fact, we're plotting the trades and the bids uh, as positive. The uh, trades shown by this slightly fatter bar and uh, we're, we're plotting the asks negatively. Now, if we were to ask TradeStation what was the value for one of these, uh, these items a number of bars ago, TradeStation can't tell us that. So what we do in this program is when we have the value for each bar, we store it uh, in a text file on our computer using the stream writer and then we later read it back using stream reader and the value that we use to, indi uh, to uh, index it is based on the date time. Now as I say this is based on program 80 but it is uh, a lot more simple so I think probably a little bit more easy to understand. Now, the other thing you'll notice on this chart is we've got some green lines here. And these, if we just look at the uh, inputs, we've got various inputs. One of them is the file and name and path, file name and path. And what you need to do is make sure that this is a unique and different file for each chart. It's very important. Otherwise, you'll get an error. But uh, we've got two more inputs extreme num and extreme color so what they do is if a bar one either the trades the bids the ask is greater than the value in the last 20 bars then we color the bar using the color value now you'll notice that the color that we just uh, we just looked at was actually a color object name it's in quotes it's a string and uh, the program will process that by using something similar to what we did in quick tip 33 i put a link on the program page but what it does it inputs the color string and then outputs the uh, the color integer which is in rgb format now in terms of what sort of chart this will uh, work with if you look at the program your page you'll see uh, exactly how I've indexed this and that means that we this will work on time-based charts uh, what it won't work on necessarily it will work in real time on a tick-based chart but if you go back and then uh, refresh it then it will not necessarily or it may pick up the values incorrectly so this is really meant for time-based charts and you'll see I've got it on a 30 second chart uh, I've got it on several minute charts and so on and um, so let me just show you what it looks like if we don't have the data. So we have here a 10-minute uh, chart. And uh, you'll see if we go back far enough that certain places I did not have this switched on. So you'll see that actually there is no data during this period. But once the data is stored there, then that will be uh, re-available. So if I do Control r you'll see the chart refresh and then you'll see those bars coming back because they're stored in the text file. So just to finish, what I want to do is look at the settings. So if we just let me look at the uh, the five minute. In terms of this extreme bar, that is set up as a user input or the color is set up as a user input. The other colors are set up in the actual format of the strategy. So if we go to that, click format, uh, you'll see that uh, in terms of style, each of the plots is set up as a histogram. The bid count and the ask count are set up with this fit thickness on my chart. You could obviously choose a different one. And then the, uh, the trade count is a little bit more thick. What I've done is I've made these slightly transparent 
or at least the trade count I've made slightly transparent. Um, in this example, the bid and the ask count, they're just uh, 100% solid. And then in terms of colors, you can uh, decide which colors you would like to use. In this case, I've got a sort of mauve for bid counts, orange for ask counts, then trade count we've got as white. And then uh, just going back to the, well, uh, let's just uh, look at the scaling. I've got it set to subgraph two with the right axis, and that's probably a, a fairly standard way of doing it. But uh, if we just go back and look at the chart that I looked at a moment ago, uh, what I've done on this chart is I've actually overlaid the data on top of the bars, which you may find uh, useful or not. But uh, the way that's set up, if you just go format, analysis techniques, and then um, format, and then on the scaling, what I've done is I've put this on the subgraph one with no axis, and then for the the chart itself, that's just set up uh, standard way. Um, in other words, subgraph one, and uh, we have we um, we're using the right axis to scale on. Okay, so uh, that's program 81. I hope you might find it useful. Please subscribe to this YouTube channel and then join the email list. Okay, thank you very much.